Bien, muchas gracias. Vamos a iniciar. So we are now going to start with the official opening of LACNIC 39, and I'm very happy to introduce uh, Leonardo Guzman, uh, 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 professor, and uh, for of the uh, and uh, the uh, representative of the state of Yucatan. Now I'm going to give the floor to Alejandro for him to start. Alejandro. Good morning, everyone. It is really a pleasure for me to to be that we here we are all together again for another LACNIC meeting, LACNIC 39. Before I start, let me greet the authorities with us, especially the Secretary of Innovation, Mauricio Camaraleal of Yucatan and uh, the colleagues of the board of LACNIC and Van Maya, who unfortunately couldn't come with us, but who's recovering and hopefully he'll be f with us in the future. And uh, so many friends uh, that are with us here, we greet them and we are happy to share these uh, spaces of collaboration. And we also welcome and greet all those who are connecting because our event is hybrid, so we uh, have the two possibilities to attend this. For, more, for over 20 years, LACNIC has uh, held uh, these events, traveling from one place to the other, at different uh, across Latin America and the Caribbean. So far, we have organized events in 24 cities and 17 different countries in the region. And why do we do that? Why do we go to so many places in the region? Because these meetings give us an opportunity for networking between different companies and organizations and we also have spaces for training and the people who are working in the uh, with the internet in every uh, in different aspects governance technical parts cooperation and uh, may have an opportunity to learn about new things that are important for the development of the internet in the region and also to give us opportunities for to collaborate so that we can continue to build the internet in Latin America and the Caribbean. That is why we are here in Merida in our fourth event in the country. This is the fourth time we're coming to Mexico. We were there in Cancun, in Mexico City, and now here in Yucatan. And we are so happy for coming back to this beautiful country, a country with such a huge diversity in its culture, in its cuisine, in its landscapes. I've had a chance to be almost in the four points of uh, the country, and uh, we are so happy to be here. It's so beautiful. Yucatan is a state with a huge diversity and history beautiful beaches, uh, xenodes, uh, natural parks, archaeological sites, as a matter of fact, one of the seven marvels in the world. So what a privilege to be here this week. Now, these events, uh, 20 years ago, uh, the, the events of 20 years ago have nothing to do with in size. And LACNIC 3 that we had in Mexico City in 2002, we had 90 people attending. Now let us let's compare it with today. If you look at the number of people present here, 1,400 people registered, and by this morning, 665 had registered. Uh, the 840 in person plus 560 remotely. So this is one of the largest events so far. And this shows the huge interest of the community to continue to collaborate, to learn, and to keep on building uh, the internet of the region together. So let me tell you about some of the things that we are going to uh, discuss uh, this uh, week so that you can make the most of what you are going to have. Well, yesterday we had the LAC Peering Forum that was a success with a massive participation with the talks and with the possibilities for doing business. It was excellent to hold uh, peering uh, agreements and uh, 
the Rice Conference and Training, we the Public Policy Forum. That's a space where we want to collaborate to make sure that the policies that are used for assigning resources in the region may be um, uh, consistent with uh, the uh, interest of the community. We have the uh, Members' Assembly. So those of you who are members of LACNIC, please register so that you can attend, because there we present uh, the current status of uh, the uh, organization. We want to ensure that you are knowledgeable and that you participate in the decisions. We have the LACNIC Technical Forum, social events, coffee breaks that are also these are not minor issues because there we can talk and we can find people that we hadn't seen and we can find people to talk of a certain project or business. Let's make the most of these spaces and the tutorials that are an opportunity to continue to learn. Friday morning, we'll have the LACNOC meeting, the Forum of Operators of Latin America and the Caribbean. And if you noticed that something that was not a normal part of LACNIC events is to have a trade show. We started this recently and it continues to grow. Today, we have more than 15 booths of sponsors with the objective of uh, approaching uh, the different uh, of uh, the, the, the vendors to the uh, uh, users, uh, and this is something that we also wanted to promote from LACNIC, from the board and the staff. We are happy to be able to meet with the community after a long time when we were unable to get together and uh, now going back to normal and having more than one uh, opportunity to meet, uh, we notice that these spaces are really uh, important and that there are many things that we can do remotely, but others that uh, when we are uh, had face to face, we need to, to make the most of it. And we reinforce our commitment to continue to give a community quality services and to meet the needs of the community and the members especially, and to make sure that the organization is here for the long term, uh, term and that it will continue to give, to provide to the community the things that we've given uh, so far and that we continue to do it. Finally, I want to again thank the government of Yucatan for hosting this event. Really, it's been an excellent event. We have really enjoyed everything we've seen so far and we still what we still have to enjoy and our sponsors that made this event uh, possible and uh, of course the attendees because ultimately you are the uh, our target. So we thank you God and we thank you uh, we thank uh, uh, the uh, people in charge of organizing the meeting. We know that the staff of LACNIC is working very hard and everything goes uh, smoothly thanks to your effort. And finally, I invite you all to continue to build the internet in our region and to make the most of this cooperation opportunity because in the rest, so that in the rest of the week we can continue to talk and build the internet for Latin America and the Caribbean. Thank you, Alejandro. Now let me invite Mauricio. Good morning, everyone. First of all, good morning in the name of Mauricio Vila, the governor who welcomes you to this, his, your conference here at Yucatan. We are so happy to have this uh, Congress and to be part of this important uh, uh, meeting, and especially because of the importance that uh, the Internet has today in such a globalized world. I welcome Alejandro and all the ACNIC uh, authorities and all the, uh, um, the uh, corporate sector, the academia. So we are here together and we are experimenting those significant uh, breakthroughs that uh, after, because of the pandemic, we, we needed to improve our technology and our connectivity and to make the most of the existing digital tools. So from um, for Governor Villa, 
tech, science and technology are a very significant part of the public policy and and there are many examples of things that we have done from our second ministry. Many of you here may know that you are the first state that has a cybersecurity engineering, but also a specialty in cybersecurity. This is not uh, just the last fad, but uh, we have worked for five years at the Secretariat, with, uh, the ministry with Accenture, a company that has facilitated the know-how and what you as the companies in the sector, what you need Oh, so that the, that the, the young people to learn so that when they graduate from uh, engineering or the, they may have the knowledge that you need in your industry. That is one thing. The cybersecurity uh, careers didn't used to exist, were not offered in a catalog, and this is the first state that at public universities is offering these uh, careers. So. And you may have heard uh, Pablo, who was in the panel. We hosted and will con uh, again host the most important uh, Congress of Science and Technology and Innovation of the Southeast uh, uh, of Yucatan, Yucatan I-6, from uh, uh, September 26th to 29th. Why is this Congress so important? Because in the Mexican Southeast, there had never had uh, been such an opportunity. If we wanted a Congress of this uh, size, you had to go to Mexico City, Guadalajara, or Monterrey. Last year, we waited from four to 5,000 people. Those were our optimistic figures. We have finally, we had 11,000 people that registered. Mm -hmm. That is why we in, uh, invite you so that uh, from September the 26th to 29th, we we'll can uh, come to the Yucatan I-6. In addition, um, and in hand with the Secretary, of, uh, we are launching the digital Yucatan strategy to provide all the schools and universities public of the internet, but not just any internet, but good internet. And to tell you the truth, the figures they give us is that before this administration is over, all the schools and public universities of the state of Yucatan will have a so-called decent and optimal internet. Wait. One of the other programs that we have been promoting together with Mauricio Villa, the governor, is precisely the reduction of the gender gap. And what gender gap, you might ask yourselves, it is no secret that in the STEM studies, the percentage of women and men is more or less in the proportion of 80% men and 20% women. So in view of this, the government instructed me to privilege and promote the incorporation of women into these career options. That is why the state government has promoted the STEM scholarships for women. In other words, all women who decide to study a STEM option, a STEM profession in the public universities will be free of tuition and charges. And this is yet one further promotion aimed at reducing this gap to at least 60-40 by the end of this 10-year period. We have also been working in coordination with companies to develop a model called Academy. This Academy model is having an important immersion of the businesses with the universities. What do I mean with this? This is not only about saying, I want you to learn uh, so software engineering, to really fill my vacancies, but companies have to be present at universities with a focus on learning the skills required by the companies, sharing knowledge on software licenses and skills, etc. And this has a retribution. So those students who apply for this model academy then become your own assets in your businesses because we are aware that the demand 
in the science and security sector is very high. We were told they were telling they were telling us in France that they produce about seven thousand to ten thousand engineers a year, and the demand is for twenty five thousand. But they didn't count on the fact that Germany, their neighbor, generates better job opportunities than from the seven to ten thousand people who graduate for. 1,000 go over to Germany, so the demand in France is not the difference between what they produce and what they require, but what is quote-unquote stolen from Germany, by Germany. So that is why in Yucatan we have promoted generating talent, generating human capital. And how do we go about this? We have the infrastructure at our universities so that they are in a position of accepting more students. Last year, five new technological study options were created at university. We are receiving between 4,000 to 500 people who would not be able to study because of reasons of infrastructure or because the university don't have the capacity to do this. And so, these are just some of the examples we have been implementing in Yucatan and have to do with the technological or technological-based sector. We're very pleased to have you with us here. I'm confident that there will be a lot of synergy with all of you, with all the participants, and I think you are the experts on this topic, namely that internet, information technology, is what is shaping this new globalized world. And those who don't participate in events such as this and those who don't establish the synergies with the businesses and with the universities hand in hand with the government will be unable to advance. So on behalf of the governor, Mauricio Villa, I would like to give you the very warmest welcome and I hope this Congress will be fruitful for each one of you. So, having said that, uh, today, March, May the 9th, I inaugurate this Congress of LACNIC 39. Thank you very much to all of you. Bien. Muchísimas gracias. Thank you very much, Alejandro. Thank you very much, Mauricio. Like Mauricio says, LACNIC 39 is now formally open. A big round of applause once again. And in a couple of minutes, we will start with the presentation on reports to the community. This will be done by Laura Kaplan, who is uh, from LACNIC.